this is Tony Benuelo said he's going to be talking to you a little about deploying and managing VMware Horizon View. So let's continue with the clapping and welcome him. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for stopping by. Hopefully, um, this, session is, is, uh, this session is good for you. Uh, it's, not, it's a quick session, but I'm going to try to cover important topics with regards to VDI at the remote branch. Is this better? No? Yeah. Better. This is, okay. Got to hold it up here. Okay, got it. It's like I'm singing. Ah, got it. One, se one second. There we go. Okay, so let's let's get started. So just a, a quick uh, overview of what what we're seeing in technology. I'm sure most of you have have been seeing this. Um, the the concept of moving your services up to a cloud, up to a data center, including VDI. What are the risks that are associated with that? Or what, first, what are the benefits? So really, you get rid of that IT infrastructure at the branch office, right? You're able to run with no servers. It, it really uh, impacts your cost, both operational and also CapEx, right? And also, um, it, it, you don't have to have IT admins there at your branch offices. So there are benefits, right? And that's, that's uh, we all strive to, to save money and pay less for the services that we get or we render to our users. Now, what are the risks? What if that WAN link goes down? Your users are now without the applications that they need to keep the business going. Especially if you need mission critical applications, if you're a retailer and you have your point of sale running at the cloud, that WAN goes down. What do you do without that connection? Or if you're a medical office that needs to always be connected to your data center to uh, access medical records. If you disconnect, what happens? You don't, you don't have access to those medical records. So the alternative has been the full service branch. So you have all your uh, local server, uh, servers running your point of sale, running your applications for medical. Uh, you don't have reliance on the WAN, but there's, com there's complexity to administering all of those branch offices, right? You now really need uh, some type of IT staffing at those sites because somebody has to take care of who, who manages the router, who manages the server, the applications, right? Um, but the benefit is that you're running uh, independently, but it's not cost effective. So what we're trying to aim is going with the lean branch approach. So there are applications that you use at your remote offices that can be hosted in the cloud, right? And if the WAN goes down, your users can live without those, those applications for a certain amount of time. But what about those mission critical applications? Why not have enough compute to run those applications offline, right? But also, as you do that, really converge your infrastructure so that it's easy to maintain, easy to manage, and it's cost effective. So I'm going to talk to you about our Cisco UCS E-Series server. How many of you know the Cisco UCS E-Series server by a show of hands? Of course, all the Cisco guys are going to raise their hands, of course. <laughs> so Cisco UCS E-Series server is the server blade that actually goes into our branch routers. If you're familiar with our Cisco ISR routers, the 2900s, the 3900s, our new 4451, the Cisco E-Series inserts right into one of the service module slots in that router. You're probably familiar also, if you're familiar with those routers, you're familiar with the SRE blades, our legacy or our older server blades. 
the UCS E-Series is much powerful and you can really start thinking about virtualizing applications, not just one, but multiple applications. Hosting them on the E-Series, right? And reducing the infrastructure that you have at your branch offices. So I'm not going to go too much through this, but this is uh, the portfolio of our ISRG2s. We start off with our 800 series for that remote office, uh, uh, CVO or office worker, single home user. Up the chain, we go to the 1900s. And on the 2900s is, is where we start offering our Cisco UCS E series servers. We start at the 2911. You notice the asterisk on the 2901. That's because they, there's no SM slot that goes that can, we can, where we can insert an E-Series. But starting from the 2911 onwards, we do support the UCS E-Series server. So we have a couple of models, or three models, of the UC, uh, Cisco UCS E-Series server. This is the first one, this is called the single wide. It's called the single wide because it only takes up a single service module slot within the Cisco ISR router, okay? It can go up to 16 gigs of memory. It has a quad-core processor, Intel Xeon based. Uh, you can configure it through our Cisco um, integrated management controller. Same exact feel as your standalone C-series management. If you're familiar with our Cisco UCS, you know the C-series. It's the same SIMC that you use to manage these blades. So you can do the virtual KVM, you can uh, configure the RAID through them, you can configure the BIOS, and you can do all of this through the HTTP-based GUI. So you can actually access these uh, remotely. The next blade is our double wide blade. Now this comes in two flavors. Both flavors support up to 48 gigs of memory. They can, they, they can go up to uh, three terabytes of storage. Uh, I, I should have mentioned on single wide we can go up to two, uh, two terabytes. Um, on this guy, we support up to three two and a half inch disks. We also support a, a quad-core uh, Intel-based processor and a six-core processor. So the compute is, is, you know, for a branch office, it's pretty high. It's pretty powerful. This is what the solution would look like at your branch office. So think about uh, if you're, let's take the example of retail. You need video surveillance. You need when or, or uh, when optimization. Maybe you have a need for desktop virtualization. You have uh, basic uh, basic needs of print and file, AD DNS services, right? All of these services in the past required separate appliances sitting somewhere in a closet within that retail store, where you don't have much room. Especially if you think about uh, retail, they're usually in a in a small footprint within a mall small footprint within a, a shopping block in a city. And that space is being taken up by uh, IT infrastructure where you would normally want merchandising or products that you can actually sell. With this solution, you can actually replace all of that, that a, half in, a half a rack of equipment and just put a 2RU, 3RU, a piece of equipment that does all of the services for that office. Uh, we spoke about the Cisco Blade Management. Again, it's integrated management controller. One of the things uh, that I should also mention is recently we um, enable or we offer now uh, the XML API interface on the Cisco E-Series. So you can manage these through a third-party uh, uh, tool remotely. Okay, this could be... Uh, this could be Microsoft System Center. It could even be HPCom if that's the product that you're using. So let's talk about a little bit now on how VDI runs on the Cisco E-Series. Okay? So we actually gave an E-Series to VMware to test because we wanted to know how it would perform running the VDI natively on this box. They were able to take our uh, UCS E160D, this is our six core processor unit, and they were able to uh, deploy 25 virtual desktops with heavy knowledge worker profile and have great performance on it. So that's 25 VDI sessions. So if you think about 
the common uh, remote office, that's about the, the number of users that they would have. It's actually between 15 and 20, typically. So the E-Series is sized with hardware good enough to run these applications for these VDI users locally. Traditional VDI deployment says all of your VDI sessions are going to be hosted in the data center, no matter where your location is. So you better have a really good WAN pipe and very good reliability on there so that your remote office clients can access those VDIs. Not a lot of customers have that or want to invest on their WAN to get there. Right? That's, that's a problem. The other thing is user experience. If I'm at a remote branch and I'm accessing my VDI session from a data center that's you know, across country, I'm gonna have user experience issues from time to time because nobody can, nobody can gar really guarantee me the bandwidth or the latency that I need, right? So I'm gonna have trouble uh, seeing my VDI at the branch office. As long as I'm on the campus, I'm good, right? I have land speed, the latency is controlled, the bandwidth is controlled, no problem, but once I, access that VDI through a branch or through a WAN, I might have some user experience issues. So with Cisco UCS E-Series, the solution that we can deliver is actual deployment of the VDI sessions for those users running locally to their office. And this is fully integrated into the VMware View Horizon architecture. So you can have that centralized management and that centralized view of those VDI sessions from your headquarters, but give the users at the remote office the experience that they expect when they're connecting to their VDI. So their applications like Exchange, Email Exchange, perhaps they have other, uh, other services that they're accessing through the data center that can be optimized through WAN. Uh, remember, PC over IP, which is what VMware uses, cannot be optimized by WAN, by our, our WAN uh, or our WAS product, okay? That's our WAN optimization product. PC over IP cannot be optimized by that. But TCP-based traffic, other, other traffic that typically run through the WAN, whether you're on VDI or not, can be optimized. So you can leverage that, right? And now that PC over IP is not being rendered across the WAN, it's running locally between the, the, the remote user's client and the UC, Cisco UCSE locally. So the experience is gonna be way better for that customer, okay? There's also a plugin that View uh, created working with us that's called the VMware View Agent Direct Connection. What does that give you? So we were talking about what happens if the WAN goes down. So say that the WAN goes down and your users are authenticating to the VMware View connection broker up in the data center because you're doing centralized management, right? What if the WAN goes down if they're, and they have not connected? They're not gonna be able to authenticate. How are they gonna connect? What we've done is we've created a plugin so that in the case that the WAN does go down, your, the user will be able to authenticate directly to the virtual machine assigned to him through the VDI broker in the case of a WAN outage. And there's many methods of caching the applications or caching uh, uh, applications that, that they were using on the server itself until the WAN comes up and then you, you do the asynchronous backup or the, 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 you do the caching and then it, 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 it syncs up again once, once the WAN is up, okay? This is uh, just a, a quick update on, on what the Cisco Wide Area Application Services or was. Again, when you're creating these VMs across the WAN, if you're using link clones, link clones uses heavy, heavy uh, data to create those links. In a data center, when you're creating them on a server that's within your data center network, you have 10 gig pipes, it's not a problem. But if you're creating those VMs across the WAN, you're gonna have some latency issues and some bandwidth issues. It's gonna take up the whole pipe. But what we can do is with WAS, we can actually see up to 99% of reduction ratio of that traffic. Okay, so WAS 
is able to take the traffic that is needed to create those link clones at the branch and reduce it significantly, optimizing your WAN and making the, the creation of those link clones possible efficiently. The other piece we wanted to cover is what if I, I have re applications that are really, really intense on writes and, uh, and reads on my storage. So we also partner with Atlantis, which they have a, a, a product called Elio, that allows us to use a piece of the uh, memory that's on our server, our UCSC series. It's about 10 gigs that you would require. And it uses that RAM to, to present it as the first piece of the read and write of the storage. So it, it, it basically clusters memory with your spinning disk and presents it as shared storage to your VMs. And what it's doing at the back end, it's using the memory to do the fast reads and writes, and then writes buffers the, the, the permanent data into the spinning disk. The user's not aware of this happening, this is all done in the background, right? But what, that's, what this accomplishes is 55 times more IOPS, more performance on the storage. So you can start really thinking about running more VDI sessions with better user experience, right? Uh, with Elio taking our boxes, they were able to do up to 35 desktops with a power user profile. This means flash running, all of the applications, Windows, PowerPoint, PDF scrolling, all of these applications running simultaneously across these users uh, without, without a problem. Just an example of the, of, of the uh, test results that I was talking about that Elio did for us, again, 35 VMs. Um, seven, uh, Windows 7 desktops, 10 gigs of RAM to optimize the storage performance. Okay, and you can see the response times here. It's very, very flat, telling us, this is uh, Login VSI, if you're familiar with Login VSI. This is basically a tool that measures the performance or the response of each VM as commands or, or IOs are going through it. It's very, very flat, and the response times are, are in uh, yeah, so the, uh, the baseline didn't even get, get reached. So for more information, I want, you guys, I want to invite you guys to visit Cisco Office in a Box Solution Brief. There's also a case study from Northrim Bank um, that tells you how VDI is uh, helping them solve a lot of their issues that they had back, uh, uh, back in their business model. And also visit cisco.com slash go slash UCSC. Uh, thanks, guys, for your time.